I did want to ask is communication between us. Um, I do know that I send a lot of emails. You know, we, we only see each other once a month for, you know, conversation. Is that an efficient way for me to communicate with you? Should I be expecting a response to things, or is this more me alerting you to topics that we're going to have to discuss at a meeting so you're not blindsided by it? Well, it's something that you believe should be on the agenda. You should let us know. I, mean, I have to say one thing. And I'm embarrassed to have to say this, but I fell badly short of being civil with you the other day, and I didn't reply to your email, so I apologize for that. It's, you know, it's like I said, I, and I know there's public meeting rules, I know there's, you know, not one member of the board can speak to the entire board type of a thing, but just even from the perspective of, we got it, let's discuss this, at next, and even if it's you know, you guys needed to confer and say, Brian, what are we going to do with this? And then, you know, I just get a note back saying, yeah, these are topics we should put on the agenda for discussion or go pound sand. You know, just some kind of an acknowledgement so I kind of know where we're going with it. Because again, I'm the intermediary between you and the department, so trying to filter and share information is really what I'm looking to get to, so. I, I, I think I think, you know, maybe I sent you a, a note. Yeah. I, I think, you know, maybe it should be addressed to the chair, and then the chair can get replies from all of us, and then put it all together. We make sure we're on the same page. Like, Dwight's not telling you one thing, I'm telling you sure, something sure. else. So I, I think that's the way it should happen. You know, send it to the chair, chair, Asks for replies, puts it all together, and then because yeah, I do back. send it to everybody, you know, I don't usually send it to just one of you. Right, I, I know, but it should, yeah. you know, wh what I would do is okay, it's addressed to the chair, and then CC to the other board members. So this way, the chair knows to reply to this by getting um, replies from each of the board members because, you know, something to be discussed among us. Otherwise, you know, otherwise you just end up getting random replies that don't even mesh with one another. That, that's what I think. But yeah, it, if it's you... That's fine. I mean, yeah. just, just note one thing, though. You may not get an email. You might get a phone call. Which, definitely <laughs> fine. And Brian, we've been friends long enough, okay. and we've worked together long enough. I completely understand. The longest communication. That's, right. yeah, that's really the key. You know, like we were telling the story about Metro North, for just the communication is all that we're looking for. And if there's something you think that should be on the agenda, just sure. Yeah. Send it. Okay. So for the old business, these were things that I did shoot you guys a note um, that we were pending. They were holding over for a couple of months because of the transitionary state the board was in. But um, the low sap statements for the membership, you guys recall, we used to get those nice printed front and back. It had your beneficiary, it had your payment, it had your years of service, your vested hmm. percentage. We haven't seen those in years. And uh, one of the members did notice that they did not see an increase in their um, low sap benefit this year as if the 2021 um, increases or year of service was not included. And he did have a good year of service, so it would be something that needs to be checked with, checked on. Mm -hmm. I know we paid several insurance policy premiums. Uh, as far as months ago, months ago. Yes. as far as that go, that's a Chris question. Yeah. Sure, no, no, definitely, no, understood. Right. And he, the member, reached out to me. Yeah. And I told him, I gave him Chris's contact info. So I don't know where they Yeah, and I had it. reached out to Commissioner Waddle okay. directly as well. Right. <coughs> um, I still, and I really hate to keep harping on it, but a copy of what I've spent for the budget so far, because I do need to start planning for next year, which I'm assuming is going to be pretty imminent request for the budget numbers. Roughly, roughly 4,000 something left. <coughs> you, because you're, all right, not you. Russell was given ten thousand dollars, and that was it. And all that's been spent is forty-seven hundred dollars. 
Well, I, I guess my question is more like along the lines of there's equipment line items. Now I have, I know I've spent money on SCBA bottles, but I don't know what's left in that budget line item for turnout gear, for uniforms, that kind of stuff, because there are things that, you know, I haven't purchased because I wanted to kind of see where things were. Well, they don't like doing that. I mean, it should be a pretty simple spreadsheet that Robin would have just showing what the budgeted line item was and what's been spent or associated to that line item. <coughs> you said that. Would it be in the profit and loss budget versus actual? Uh, she, uh, no, because the breakdown. I'll get back to you with that. Okay. Because I get a point. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I, like, you know, when you said get, you know, the, the 10,000, like, you know, for inspection, you know, I budgeted 25, I spent 24, well, that's fine, so I know for next year, it'll okay. stay around the same, you know, things yeah. like that, so. Um, and I know this is a Commissioner Weddle, but an insurance rider for the recruitment carnival that we're looking to have, so I will follow up with him. Um, and uh, the riding on trucks. Correct. And will the board be responding to the membership with the questions they raised on the property, the project for the property? Yes. Um, we have. Uh, uh, it'd be shortly, but I mean, yeah. Okay. Um, I have nothing with regards to membership. No expenses this month. Thirty-one alarm for the month of August. Uh, see attached. Uh, future dates. This Saturday we've got community day. October 2nd is our open house, October 16th are the annual physicals, and October 23rd is that uh, recruitment carnival that uh, I mentioned. And other than that, there's a few more dates, November, December, but I didn't feel it was necessary to raise those this month. And that's all I have. Your pleasure. Make a motion we accept it. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Treasurer's report. Do you all have the uh, Robin's report in front of you? Do you want me to read the amount? Yeah, if you could, please. The proposed check register detail is $79,762.07 for your approval. That and distribute them? I did. Which one? Yeah. This one here? I don't. Yeah. The other. That's the profit and loss. There's yeah. the other one. Um, this one? Mm -hmm. I didn't see that dollar value. At the bottom? There it is. Okay. 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 All right. What's your pleasure? I will make a motion that we accept it. I've been going through the checks and sign them as have you. And uh, I've been trying to keep. And keep track of what we're spending, yeah. and everything looks all right to me. I would make a motion yeah. accept. I second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No carry. Secretary's report. Um, the state of New York has discontinued the emergency declaration to allow for remote meetings by public bodies. So going forward, um, all board meetings need to be conducted in public or you need to notice um, if someone will be meeting via Zoom with their location. So just so you know, um, consultants and other staff members could be via Zoom, but board members need to be physically present where it's noticed. And that's it. I also have the minutes of August 18th before you for your approval. I made the change that you requested about.
accept them, but I wanted to give Chris a chance to uh, read it. If he wants to make any comments. Okay. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. All right, committee reports. House, I have nothing purchasing. Uh, anything. Uniforms, physicals, which he just informed us when they are. But the update with CLC. I think they're having a meeting on the, the 20th. 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 Uh, Here? Yep. Yeah. Here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to let him in? Yeah, I'm with him. Right. 6.30, I think. I can't remember if I think 6.30. That sounds seven. about right. right. Tech, uh, okay. Technology? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't have anything uh, to report on. That. Engineering and building? No, and, I, and hopefully it could definitely be taken off the list. You know, that's all done. It's done. We got paid. Yeah, that, that's all taken care of. Okay. Well, I don't know if they've paid the $700, though. That that I don't know. Uh -huh. The last I heard from Robin, they... 6.30 for sales. The last I heard from Robin, uh, Oak Lane still owes us $700. She said that there was still an amount outstanding. Yeah, I think seven. I can't remember. But Robin would know. Right. I'll check into it. Any projects? Nothing right done. Okay. Commissioner Smith, finance. Um, when I have been presented with the checks, I've been going through them and <coughs> comparing them, and the bottom line, and everything looks uh, looks uh, up and up on the board, up above board. So I'm, I'm happy with the way Robin's taking care of things these days. Good. Trucks? Um, yeah, um, so I got a, a bunch of little things. If we have time, I'll finish it all, I hope. Um, I received authorization from Robin, who had transferred the Verizon uh, super password, uh, user password, from Russell to herself, and then she now has given that information to me. So I will be working with Greg, and we will be there get his uh, iPad uh, squared away uh, and get his talk book, I think, taken out of his truck and taken off the thing. Um, old business, kind of. Um, I contacted our vendor, buyer, dealer, ref representative that took care of our van, and uh, they were supposed to meet with me yesterday, but uh, I didn't hear from him, so um, I'm going to call him. I didn't get to call him last night, but I'll call him tomorrow and see what the story is, if he wants to try and uh, represent us in the sale of the old 2064. There is another outfit out there um, that is, uh, I guess, a national group. Yeah, so we can deal with them too. Yeah, Auction International. So we can deal with them too. It's, it's not a big we deal. Use them the Auction International? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, 144, the six radio pocket charges for the six new fire ground radios have been installed and are fully serviced, or in service on 144. Um, one thing when I bought those, Chief, we didn't ask them, and they, the, the, deal, the, the dealer, dealer, they didn't offer to us, and we didn't think to ask them if we wanted the cases engraved. So some of our portable radios have engraving on them, and I'm wondering if you'd like to do that, like 206 and then 144, or 206 and CFD or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think definitely having something that indicates that it's CFD yeah. beyond just the purple tape that we use on everything would really be helpful because, okay. again, things do get put down and misplaced. So right. some type of indication. All right, I'll get a price on that, and, and I'll work with you in if the you, month. If you could also see if they would give you a price for the new pagers that we have. Those were not engraved either, and yeah. if they had a CFD, I mean, we started taking the label pro and yep. making, but it's already starting to peel off. So right. if they could, you know, just CFD on those like our pagers always had, that would probably All be right. helpful. The thing I'm suggesting though is it would be like 206 and CFD because there's Croton. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I yep. um, so sense. 
so pagers and radios. All right, yeah. we'll phase it in. And we'll maybe do. And the other thing that may be less expensive than the engraving, we could order those metallic stickers that are really permanent stickers, and put them on everything to <coughs> point two hundred six CFD. So and, that's and another option. It might be less expensive. An engraving tool too. If I'll let you do that because I'm not putting an engraving in electronics. We'd never get them back. Um, okay, so I'm also going to talk to the chief about and. I've already mentioned it to Greg at some point. He thinks that in Red Alert, there is a feature where we can track batteries and the date codes and things like that. So we're going to work on that, I think, at some point, <coughs> just to see if we can track when the batteries are coming of age that we're going to have to start thinking about replacing. Obviously, the radios beep at us when they start getting weak, but we'll see. Um, we have serviced 146. It had its PM and its inspection over across the river. Um, we held off on 144 for a couple of reasons. We had the, the Labor Day and we were running shy at, during the summer months of uh, drivers. I reached out to that outfit up north in Hopewell. Um, they do everything but inspections. And the outfit in Mount Kisco that did U155, they do everything except pumps. So <coughs> yeah, I can bring it, we can have, and the people up in Hopewell they come down to do our work here. But then we still have to take it up to, potentially up to uh, Mount Kisco to have them inspect it. I mean, that's and definitely my preference yeah. because we're not losing somebody for three hours Four with traffic. Hours. And, yeah. you know, during the day when we would have to take it, sure. it takes my drivers out of town. So sure. and running Kisco. it up to Kisco is much, so much more preferred. I called them. They told me that they will be able to help us and at that point I was talking to them about uh, the ladder but 144 is now in the queue it needs to be inspected this month so we can take it up to Mount Kisco and then the PM could be done when they have time but the guy in Mount Kisco um, he says when he puts it up on the lift he really wants us to drain up some percentage of the, uh, the water because it's just too heavy okay. so we'd have to take out 50 to <coughs> 75 percent not a big water. deal you know. um, we just have to add it back in once right. we bring it back in town. Okay. We so can that's factor that into a drill, and there, there's a number of yeah. ways that yeah. that's not an insurmountable issue. So I called the folks in Hopewell when we had a problem with manpower getting it over to across the river to get it inspected in PM 144, I'm talking about. And they never got back to me. So I got it's sort of a, a burr under my saddle right now. Why didn't they get back to me about this? So we'll see what happens. Um, Rescue 2-3 had its PM done up in um, the Brewster area. Um, they resolved the open items. They had a, a fluid called DEF. It's an additive to the diesel fuel. That was that sensor was a new one was installed in the reservoir. Um, the broadcast radio apparently had a, a wire that had come loose. I'm guessing it was the antenna wire. So that seems to be working. And the phone tank. Uh, there was an issue with that. They resolved that for us. Um, and then Utility 155, uh, we had that one inspected and PM'd up here in Mount Kisco. Commissioner Murphy and I ferried it up and back in the same day, so that worked out pretty well. Um, so now we have um, Engine 144 needs to get done sometime this month, the inspection. Um, utility 155 is done, and the ladder has to be done sometime in November. So that's when those trucks come so we have uh, the trucks are going to have their DOT weighing by John Lemke oh, yeah. on the 30th of September. So what I would suggest is since everything on the trucks has to be full, all fluids, etc., for it to be weighed accurately, why don't we make plans to take that up for its inspection first couple days of October? Um, Wait, one four four, you think? Yeah. Uh, we could do it before we do the inspection because it will be, you know, we could have the weighing done. When is he doing it? It's September 30th, 30th, right? Right. So that's the end of the month. Yeah. Kind of cutting it short. I mean, Dwight, yeah. it, nobody's going to give a fire truck a ticket for a Probably couple of days. Not. I'm just Definitely not. Stay, you know, tidy here. I don't really care when we do it. I'm going to call these folks up north and see what's what. Um, yeah, I would just tell them point blank, you've got two pieces yeah. of apparatus, good, because then it's worthwhile for them to come for the day to do both the maintenance on both vehicles. And, and per I think Chief, ex-Chief uh, Santone, he says that they're less expensive yep. than the service at Ruscon, but then we have to shuttle things slightly, not as much as at Ruscon. So I'm willing to take <coughs> at least 144 up and have them come here and do it, and we'll see how they do. 
I, I think the first time they come here, they're going to have to uh, do a little more in depth because sure. they have to find the, the right hoses, the right belts, the right filters, and the right amount of fluid that they need and all that kind of stuff. So it'll take them probably a little longer to do. But from what Greg says, um, they have three guys come down and they just swarm all over the truck yeah. to get it done. So it sounds like a, a pretty good way and to go, at least for one. Tell them ahead of time the year model if there's I've a VIN, give them the VIN, and then this way they will make sure they've got whatever they need to come down. But yes, I've heard from a number of people, they are much less expensive. They don't charge us for every rag, every washer, every nut that they use or replace. If they see something needs tightening, they tighten it. It doesn't become a billable item. And unfortunately, the prior vendor, we were paying travel time, we were paying for not just with the if the labor rate says it's two hours to be charged for changing oil they would charge us for the entire time the person was here so if they were spending time chit-chatting with some of our firefighters that was time we were paying for and it just doesn't make sense in addition to wasting time shuttling the things over the river so the two downsides with them and they're minor i think <coughs> is that they don't do inspections which kind of is too bad and the other thing is at one point i think it was it was a department in the area they had a problem uh, the outfit in Hopewell had a problem PMing the truck, and they had to actually bring the truck over to have Roscon service it. So there's some level of expertise that they are lacking that Roscon does have, but hopefully our trucks are not in that category. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try this outfit once uh, at least, and we'll see how it goes from there. Uh, see, hopefully they can save us from driving up and back and forth four men hours anyway. Save it on trucks. Yes, sir. Communications. Um, I guess I kind of stepped out of line a little bit. I, I was commenting about the uh, the radios. They've all been install installed. And the pockets have all been installed. Okay. And in one four four. The other thing is, um, we have holsters, chief, that were ordered with these radios. Um, I mean, leather holsters and speaker mics. The speaker mics should be on the radios. So I'll. I told Greg that they're in the radio, in the uh, mechanics room, and if you want to deploy them someplace, if everybody wants to carry them inside their turnout gear and have the mic extended outside, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I would say probably not since we don't. I want to maintain consistency across apparatus, and if people are used to putting on a bandolier from one apparatus but yeah. not the other, let them continue to utilize the pocket. If we do decide to deploy them to our top responders and let them keep it with their gear, we'll deal with that separately. Okay. But just remember that we have six. And there are four of one size length belt and two that are slightly longer. The athletic cut, we prefer. The to athletic cut, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I have nothing further, sir. Okay. Commissioner, what are the insurance? Yeah, I ran into a snag with people that are post entitlement on MOSAP not getting credit for their post entitlement time. Either I never knew it or I forgot it, but the uh, paperwork has to be <coughs> filled out. But I spoke to Diane and we're, we are now squared away. Everything else is fine as far as I know. All right. Several <coughs> um, so questions. One, we used to get, I guess, a certificate on it. Show us our beneficiary, our times, our years of service. We used to get it like every year, but we haven't had it in what? Two it's years? More than that, Dana. No. Goes back that far. They were just asking about those again. If we can get yeah, them. I can talk to Diane. I mean, we we presumably what happens is that we give the chiefs the LOSAP census. He gives it back to us. We sent it in, and they were generating every individual yeah. firefighter. Like everything. a statement, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Yeah. No, sure. I'll, I'll ask her. I don't see why that would be a problem. Uh, and I need a, a rider to see about giving kids rides. For. Open house, open house, open house, and uh, well, we that. Well, that's, I asked if we could look into what it would be to do that. Yeah, we had, for the remember the hundredth anniversary, that was an issue. Yeah, was, yeah, that's we said no, but yeah, but I think we no, we we, we, we had some a couple of people that it was a lottery or something, but yeah, we get a rider for passengers, and but it's for two separate dates, though, right? Well, and then the separate thing was, and I think Chris, you and I spoke briefly about what would. Guyon want to do with regards to civilians performing, pretending to do firefighter things for that recruitment weekend right. that we were looking at doing. Um, you know, if there's anything that we would need for that. I feel like I just asked her about that, but I don't remember. Thank you. 
Okay. Anything else under insurance? Nothing else under insurance. Finance? I have nothing. Compliances? As far as I know, we are. Town pays on? No one's talking to me. Legal contracts? Uh, I, I wouldn't get sent any of them to review this one. Uh, uh, policy review, which we got to get done. done. Oh, business. Policy reviews investment, procurement, purchasing, and vehicles. Uh, we'll have to set time to look at that stuff. Last uh, month? Was it last month? Paul had sent us a suggestion on the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Was it vehicles? Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. A, it was. A pr it was sort of a hybrid of a proposed vehicle policy. I didn't bring it with me. I had it last month. Oh, no, no. Okay. Uh, website discussion. The vendor reached out to me asking if they wanted to go live, and um, I think that the PR firm might want to give us some guidance because everything is ready as far as I know. Manny had his piece done, ready to go. So it would take down the old site and activate the new one. You want to check with the firm? I, I could do that. So you, okay. I'd have to, we'd have to give them. Or, I mean, they could log in even as me and just see what's there in order to see. Because it's not live, so you couldn't just go to a, a site. You'd have to. Should I tell them to contact you and you mm -hmm. can? Okay. I yeah, the, the guy reached out to me yesterday, so. Okay, okay. Brian, real quick on the town liaison. Uh, Jill Shapiro sent Greg Santone and I a note. Can you tell me the chairs of your fire commissions and the days they meet? We'd like to set up a time date to present the hydraulic modeling from Arcadis. Your expression, yeah. exactly. So they have your name and email and the night, night you meet. Okay. But apparently I'll tell them that it's not September 22nd this month. <laughs> Do you have any idea what Arcadis is? Not a clue. Okay. I was hoping, I was looking at your faces for some recognition and well, <laughs> didn't get it. Yeah. All right. Uh, can you a uh, discussion on monetization project? I think we just have to have a meeting and discuss that. All right. CLC's questions. Well, Paul was nice enough to answer all of the department-oriented questions. Thank you for that. Uh, Maybe there's a couple of more things that I could possibly answer. I'll send it out to them <coughs> prior to uh, Tuesday's meeting. So I think we've done about as much to answer a long list of questions there. All right. And then uh, donation of property to DOT, that uh, we're going to discuss in the executive session. New business. Okay, schedule works, budget work section. Okay, it's got to be completed by. So the proposed budget and estimated fund balance needs to be adopted 21 days at minimum before the budget public hearing. The date for the budget public hearing is the third Tuesday in October, which is October 18th. So the last possible day for a budget work session is September 27th, and I believe September 22nd is being proposed, which is next Thursday. Thursday meeting. So I wasn't wrong. Gentlemen, if you that's fine with, with me, the 22nd. What time would be good for you guys? 22nd, okay for you? I'm open. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what time. I thought that's when the meeting was. <laughs> okay, what time you want to do it? You do? I don't know why I got to What time to is good for you? This week. I had. Because September 1 was a Thursday. Basically, yeah, you. 
I'm just setting up a trial on the 26th, and I'm prepping a witness on the 22nd, starting at noon. We do so. Is too late, Dave? That's fine with me. Fine with me. I mean, I'm flexible. So if you wanted to do it on the next day, that's fine too. If it would free you up a little bit. That would be a Friday. The trial. The trial is the 26th. I don't have any free time between okay. now. Okay. <laughs> so might as well do the 26th. All right. Whatever's you. So seven o'clock on the 22nd. Yep. Okay. So with those dates coming, Brian, if you could get me the info that I was asking about so I can kind of put my numbers together. Can do. Thank you. And then the budget public hearing um, is on October 18th. What time did you want to do that? That is a Tuesday. Seven. Seven? Yeah, we usually do that seven, sit here half hour and then go home. Do not seven. Seven. Tommy comes. Is that okay with you? Oh, this is October 18th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Seven? Seven. Okay. Did you want to talk about the meeting? The regular meeting for October would be two days yes. later? We have to change that. Did you want to merge it with the 18th and have the budget public hearing and regular meeting on the same evening? Doesn't matter to me. Um. The budget needs to be adopted by November 4th, <coughs> which uh, historically what I've been told is it's been adopted the same evening as the public hearing before okay. or at the regular meeting following. So. We, we've done it at yeah, the public done, meeting. Yeah. yeah. So do it on the 18th. So move the regular meeting from the 20th to the 18th as well. Yeah, Immediately okay. following the budget public hearing. Well, so do we have three? Do we have enough time to post notice on? Say it's the 15th? Um, to post notice for oh, the budget the board session? That's yeah. the 18th. I'm sorry. Never mind. We have lots of time. Yes. No, we don't have a lot of time. We need 30 days notice, right? 30 days. 21 days. Okay. The budget needs to be adopted 21 days before the budget public hearing. The 22nd gives you an extra cushion of days. I'm actually thinking about the open meeting slot. Oh, for um, scheduling a hearing? For the 18th. Do we have enough time to? Yes, because I think it's only 14 days. Okay, thanks. I'll verify that, but I'm pretty sure it's only 14. But I'll prepare a notice this evening, so it's there with more than 30. So the 22nd is the budget workshop meeting. Yep. The 18th is the public hearing slash commissioner's meeting. Yes. Yes. And budget adoption. Yes. Right. Do you want to set the meeting time for a time certain, or just, do you just want to say immediately following? I'd say immediately following. Okay. Agreements. On the sidewalk, we're going to discuss in executive session. Stormwater maintenance agreement. Newton isn't here. She get back to you. She said that she would be here at eight, so that's in the next few minutes. All right, we'll table that too. Do you want here. to go to the Mount Pleasant agreement from 2021? That's mm -hmm. item number letter E. I was told that it's just updated payment terms, that it's actually already been received. So that's for everyone to sign. Has anyone changed from last year? I, I think the payment terms okay. were updated. This is what was sent. Has Michael worked for things? I don't know. I doubt it. What, is there uh, a new have you signed? handwritten um, change on it last year and that was removed and incorporated into the typed. We 
signed everything in July. It's just. There are three copies to the side. Now they're showing that. Fisher established the description of the town board resolution adopted February 8, 1972. Amount of money to be paid by our district for Zubin to paragraph 2 is $53,612.77. Contract amount each subsequent year negotiation will be so. We basically, we were discussed it. So I think it's just a matter of signing. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to make sure that mm. I, I, it's not a matter of me reading. I just want to make sure that Michael's happy reading because he was running point on this with Mount Kisco, and I assume he was. That sounds Kisco. I, I understand that. And I'm about to say. I'm assuming he was also working on this one as well. I can Not text Robin and ask her if Michael Gordy has signed. I just want to make sure that what we're signing is something that he's reviewed. And he's, he's, he thinks it's in our best interest to do it. Agreement uh, to pledge the district's full faith credit in lieu of posting performance bonds for the site work. I have no idea what that means. Lynn sends an email. Um, Wasn't there something that they were going to waive? Eh? I'm sorry. The town, they were going to waive yeah, something? Yeah, to waive the performance bond and basically saying that you are. We pledge. Yeah, that you. The town requires a check in the amount of $100 for the cost estimate fee. Robin, please write checks. Um, the town requires a performance guarantee for the site work. Unless you have an objection, she'll ask for a waiver um, and that you will pledge your full faith and credit as a municipal fire district in return, meaning that it'll be made whole if something happens. Yeah, I think somebody said it was void. And then the contractor will be required to have a bond and it could be used for carrying any defaults. Right. Basically, okay. just wait a couple minutes for. Well, there's no public here, so. So public comment. Yes, sir, did you hand this to me to sign? No, I just wanted you to take a look at it. I'm not, I'm, I just wanted to see if Michael has reviewed it before we do any signatures to it. Do me a favor. Can you send out all of the dates and times of everything mm -hmm. so I get it straight? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I will do that. Give me some evidence of this team contract. It's been because the price has changed, that's all. I remembered on the first one, but I forgot on the second one. I just remembered. 
you get chair next morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you're stuck till December 31st, I think. I'd like to sign here. Is that yeah. okay. Everybody's signing a separate one. Is no, we, we're each signing three copies. Yeah. Oh, so there'll be three. There'll be three originals. Got it. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh my God. No, it's fine. It's fine. I, I, I did it too. You get to be in November. I think those papers that Ed has go with the copy that. Put this one. Yeah, I was good getting lower and lower on this list. So I think I signed two of them. This there's two here. Yeah. Oh, there's oh, two, two, two there? I didn't know that. Okay. Bless you. Thank you. Oh. oh yeah. to make a motion to go into an executive session? Yep. And um, make a motion. What, should we make a motion to the meeting? Is that required? So yes. are you going to um, not conduct any further business after you adjourn? Uh, we are. No, so if so. you are going to go into an executive session and not conduct any further business in the public session, you can state that. But if you're going to come back to the meeting, and do conduct further business, there needs to be. I don't think you are. I mean, I don't we're just know. talking about the agreements. Yeah, yeah. So. Will you be voting to approve them, potentially? Oh, I don't know. We have to yeah, talk. We, we have to see. So then you may not want to adjourn the meeting. Oh, yeah. so then, all right. We don't I would just to do the motion to go into an executive session. Okay. You sound here? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Oh. So I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll make the motion that we go into an executive session. What, with one here? Um, it was a meeting. No, um, yeah. Unfortunately, you have to leave, you have to leave, and you have to leave. Yep. And Lynn is our attorney. Right. Lynn Wine. I know who she is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't need me for anything after executive session, do you? I'll nope. go down to the drill. All right. Good night, all. Okay, so the motion was made. For we need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Okay, so 8.06 p.m.